How Spanish Mount got its name is a mystery, lost to the ages, as it is not Spanish in origin, but a shell midden from the same time period as Stonehenge and the first great pyramids. It was described in 1858 as a pile of oyster shell 20 feet high covering half an acre, consumption on a very large scale, perhaps a place for feasts or festivals. The site has been studied for decades and eroding for decades. Just nine months before Hurricane Irma took the last of it, archaeologists dug in for what would be a final look at Spanish Mount. You're basically looking at people's meals, the, what's left over from what people ate 4,000 years ago. This is what the bulk of the mound is made of. The, the dense oyster and you got crab claws and it's very ashy and uh, there's some charcoal in this. Um, and it's real loose, so that because there's not a lot of soil in it or sediment, it doesn't hold together very well. What meets the eye is solid oyster. The vertebrate remains identified 42 different animals, including alligator, fox, bobcat, and bald eagle. Deer made up almost half of the biomass. The people at Spanish Mount had several close neighbors. Just five miles away is the largest and most complex of all the shell-bearing sites on the South Carolina coast. It's Fig Island, a trio of shell rings. Ring 2 is as wide as a football field and its walls were formed with millions of oyster shells. The South Carolina Department of Natural Resources owns and protects Fig Island. There's no public access. Just two miles from Fig in the Botany Bay Plantation Heritage Preserve is Pocky Island. Discovered in 2017, Pocky's two shell rings have been the focus of intense investigation in a race against the encroaching Atlantic. Artifacts from Spanish Mount and the other sites include finely carved bone pins. These took time, skill, and creativity. They were likely used for fastening clothing of deer skin as needles for weaving or decoration for the body. We've got a couple of bone pins from Spanish Mount that are very distinctive in their design. That distinctive style has shown up at other sites, other late archaic shell-bearing sites on the Atlantic coast. It's an amazing piece of artwork, really, that's 4,000 years old. These decorations, they're, they're learned. Um, they're passed on from generation to generation. I think it indicates that we're really dealing with related people. Another indicator of community ties can be seen in the pottery recovered from Spanish Mount, and it's common at the other sites. It's a sand-tempered ceramic classified by archaeologists as Tom's Creek, named for the site near Columbia where it was first identified. Recreation in the lab shows this design element was made by pressing the wet clay with the shell of the tiny marsh periwinkle. There is also evidence of trade here. Flakes of sedimentary rock and soapstone. The closest source is in the foothills of the upstate. This tells us that the people who deposited it here, who left it here, either traveled to get it directly or they traded to get it. Fig Island, Pocky, and Spanish Mount, all within a few miles of each other, all with radiocarbon dates that together provide a continuous record spanning a thousand years. It's a missing chapter in American history, and as sites are lost, so goes the chance to read that story. <laughs>